Hey YouTube, welcome back to our channel. My name is Elena. I'm Bjorn. And we are Viking Age Reenactors and Living Historians here to talk with you about your favorite Viking shows. We are continuing the epic tale of Vinland Saga, the Viking anime series that's out. Come watch with us. This is episode three. They literally gave the dude like a bear hoodie. They put him into a bear suit. It reminds me of uh, like those big like onesie oh my God. Uh, pajama things you can get. <laughs> yeah. That's what it reminds me of. Okay. Yeah, so he hired Askeladd to to um, kill Thor's because he uh, ran away from battle 15 years ago or something like that, which like, it's not, I don't think there's a law against it. It probably isn't great. If he found out you were at a battle and you survived when everybody else died, and they'd be like, hey, how did you, how did you make it back? And you were like, oh, easy. I ran away. <laughs> I left everybody to die and I ran. I booked it out of there. I don't think people would be like, oh, smart move. Yeah, Big right. brain. Nice. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I think people would be like, the f*** is wrong with you. you yeah. Know? I don't um, think you'll be looked on very favorably after that. Yeah. But that's, that's all like just assumptions and stuff. I, I don't have any historical information to, to to base that on i don't i know i have not come across anything stating that like deserters in battle get like murdered you'd certainly if you come back it might then arise as a thing and then you might get um exiled or something mm -hmm. I, I could definitely believe that being a thing but i don't i don't know of any like military law specifically that states which is a shame because i was just looking through the gula thing and force the thing mm -hmm. which is like a, has a bunch about military law but i was just looking in terms of like weapon requirements and stuff i didn't i didn't see anything in terms of that right so womp and so the barricades for the ships i don't know if it would have been done <laughs> with that much with that many with planks. A house? They literally threw okay. a house. Yep. Yeah, I mean we, we do know that later on they uh there were barricades that were or yeah, barricades that were made uh, to prevent the Vikings from coming in, in stream, because the way that Viking ships are made, they have a very a very shallow draft, which means they can um, float, they can become very buoyant and usable in, in very shallow streams. Um, so you don't have to have it like in the ocean, you can actually sail it up a river. Um, and you can get way further inland um, just because of the design of the ship, um, which people at the time weren't really accustomed or used to seeing or having to deal with. Um, and that's pretty much how you get all the raids on Paris, because Paris is way in France, but it's right on the river. Mm -hmm. So it's wicked easy for a couple of Vikings just to like sail down the river and, you know, make their way down to Paris and just bypass all the other <laughs> going on. Yeah. So yeah, so I think the English and the French um, actually built these like big chains that they like drew up across like rivers and, and across access ways to basically kind of like clothesline mm -hmm. the Viking ships mm -hmm. um, and either break them up or stall them. The last thing was the mushrooms, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so that is a heavily referenced thing. So it's it's thought of as the idea of um, the concept behind uh, berserker gong or going berserk. Um, which is, you know, for the berserkers were a, a fearsome, deadly warrior that we, everybody talks about being dressed in furs and painting themselves with scary makeup or whatever else and running into battle naked and screaming and no harm can come to them and they're high on drugs and mushrooms and all kinds of stuff. And like most of that's probably not true, um, which is a shame, but that's where that whole mushroom thing comes from. So it's, it's the fly agaric mushroom, which is a type of poisonous and hallucinogenic mushroom that's found throughout the world and in northern Europe and stuff. Um, and it's the one that you find in Assassin's Creed, actually. It is the one that we find in Assassin's Creed that gives us all those weird visions and having to go through doors and shit. Um, it is not really accurate as far as we know. Um, and there's actually a new theory about berserkers, which I really like and it makes more sense, um, that's resource and everything and it's worth a read if you're really curious about it but to summarize it's basically trying to say that um the concept of like the berserker is more of um uh attestation or a dramatization of of what berserkers were and it's done more to paint them in light of this like heathenistic warrior thing um to so that you can despise it 
basically. So you can be mad at it and not like it and feel better about being a Christian because that's what writers did back then. <laughs> they wanted everybody to be Christian and they didn't want to talk about being pagan. And so they made all the pagans bad. And that was the thing. So Berserker was probably more um, closely comparable to like Champion. Um, so it would have been this dude who kind of like wore his wealth and was kind of like the personal guard of the king or of the Jarl or something like that. Um, it would have been a very experienced, ferocious warrior. Absolutely, that is all accurate. And and yeah, and so so this whole notion of like wearing bear furs and um, painting yourself black with mud or paint or whatever else is is totally frivolous um and and a little bit of a silly outdated concept nowadays um the the mythology behind it like i said comes from a bunch of sagas writings and, and stuff there's um hrolf saga kraka which is crow hrolf crow ragnar saga something like that but he's he's like this this king and he has like a retinue of of berserkers that go along with him and do all kinds of stuff. And it's from this saga that we get this concept of berserkers being unable to be harmed by, by steel or flame. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like a very repetitive, like well-known thing about berserkers is that like no steel can harm them, no fire can burn them. And that's the saga where we get it from. Um, and there's this whole thing about it, how he's like a Christian and a stranger comes to him when he's like on his way to see a friend's house and he gives him warning and the stranger's probably Odin, but the guy being a Christian is like, mm, can't have that. So he ignores him and then they all die. And it's like, should have just listened. <laughs> um, and it's very ridiculous. But the whole thing was like his brave berserk warriors were, were so feared and, and so ferocious and so like death defying that that no steel or fire could harm them and actually and the guy who tries to kill them ends up using steel and fire to try to kill them to be like oh well let's test out that theory and it didn't go well for them but it, i think in the saga it's because they like rejected odin and like berserkers are mm -hmm. dedicated to odin and stuff but yeah the whole fly agaric mushroom thing is is outdated mm -hmm. and probably not true i've heard the same thing about hallucinogenic fish heads of like fermented fish heads that become hallucinogenics. I don't know about that. Um, there's probably a number of those things. Yeah, um, and there's also like hensbane, which is something that they definitely had. It was actually found in um, one of the pouches of uh, the woman buried in, in Alsebark. Um, probably has some kind of medicinal purpose, we don't really mm -hmm. know, but it definitely causes hallucina uh, hallucinations. Um, there's also uh, talks about um, the berserkers like gathering together before battle and like doing private berserk things and then going into a, into the battle together. So it, it might have almost been like a type of like shamanistic, like um, devotational, like immersive thing that they all did together to like get themselves in the same mindset and stuff of like going into that kind of like crazed happening. Who who know we don't know, mm -hmm. um, but a bunch of this stuff has been has been at least debunked right. fairly. One other thing that I kind of wanted to note um, really quickly is yeah. the whole concept of uh, Thor's rowing one side of the ship while they had like five or six guys on the other side. That's uh, huge power. <laughs> yeah. While that's funny, it does kind of remind me a little bit of the sagas, like in particular, um, there are some sagas like Eagle Saga that uh, talk in some scenes about um, how strong some of these characters are and these like feats of strength that they can do. So the fact that they're kind of in this funny yet, you know, very forward-facing way setting up Thor's is this very very strong dude that can out paddle like six other guys on the other side of the ship mm -hmm. um does kind of remind me of the way that the sagas are written sometimes because like you'll be reading a saga and they're just like and this guy carried a ship on his back by himself and you're just like yeah okay <laughs> yeah no totally it, it, yeah yeah that you mentioned it, it it really does articulate itself just like the sagas kind of would yeah because it's like it's exaggerated, obviously, and it's very, like, superhuman. And, like, superhuman. You, you know it's exaggerated. It's exaggerated in a way that you're just, like, this story has been passed down through, like, ten generations probably before written, being written down, and every generation just built on top just of itself. Just adds on to it, yeah, <laughs> and, like, makes it all the more ridiculous. Yeah, but but it's still kind of, like, 
under like it's believable in the sense where it's not like lasers shooting out of his eyes it's just that he's mm-hmm. wicked he's the strongest five men or something like that yeah. you know like yeah i totally get that it, it always reminds me of um of eggle saga when his dad almost ki- like kills his kills eggle's best friend and almost kills eggle and then like the maid gets mad at him for doing that and then he tries to kill the maid and then she runs off and starts swimming away and then he like picks up this like 300 ton boulder and throws it at her like half mile into the ocean and kills her it's like my dude did not get mad and then (laughs) pick up 300 tons of stone and then throw it a half mile into the no absolutely not but you know that he probably like beat her with a rock yeah (laughs) which is horrible but it's it's the whole just articulating the and exaggerating the the feats of strength and stuff, which is very, yeah. very common in the Viking Age. Now, I I thought it was very silly. I think I like the sh- how they had to make it its own shape, like not even like an oar. It was like a big paddle yeah. to like compensate. Because it's like, oh yeah, no, we know he's, yep, just I'll wait. Make a large pizza <laughs> on that thing, dude. It does look like that. <laughs> it looks like one of the I don't know what they're called, but it looks like that. Yeah. That's wicked funny. I also really just had to laugh at the fact that while there's the um the row of shields on one side of the boat he just has one on his side (laughs) um well it still makes sense because it's it's where their seats would be essentially yeah exactly i I think that there has been like some debate on and off over whether the shields on the side of the ships were more there for decoration um Mm. like decorational shields or if they were the actual shields that they wanted to battle with um, I mean, I'd like well, to say that yeah. they were actual shields that they went into battle with, but I know that there is, like, some debate out there about that. Yeah, and that probably just comes from the excavation itself, because um, mm-hmm. it's, it's, I mean, the whole concept is based on the Gokstad ship, because that one was buried with, with 16 pairs of shields that exactly. were, that were put into those sections. Um, and, I mean, a lot of times, shields and stuff were kind of purpose built for burials like they were even sized to the graves and stuff and and made small because of that so it stands to reason that those shields might have been made literally for the burial yeah and i'm pretty sure in a couple of the tapestries that showcase viking ships they Mm. do have shields so it's Mm. not just the burial thing yeah um it was something that was depicted in the art of that of those days so it it was definitely used on the ships the I, i i guess like the main debate is where the those shields there to um decorate the ship but also like say you're going into battle and you have you know 16 men on the ship well what if you put an additional 20 shields on the side on the side of the ship and made it look like a bigger army so it's what was the purpose of them i suppose i think it just makes sense that it that they would also it, be going into battle with them. Yeah, it'd be yeah. utilitarian. Like, it'd be, um, like, a utility thing, utilitarian. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't just be made purpose-built for the for the burial itself. Like, it'd have another purpose. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And hit the bell so you can be notified of our future videos. And we'll see you in the next one.